we're going to rotate this triangle 90 degrees around the center rotation point C using only a compass and straight edge. Okay, so similar to the 180 rotation, uh, we are going to start out by drawing circles, center our center rotation through each of our uh, pre-image points. Um, although I usually like to draw my circle and then find my image point first before I draw the next circle just to minimize uh, kind of some of the distractions while we're creating our, our perpendicular angles. Uh, so I'm going to start with point X. Now because we're going to be creating a 90 degree angle from point X to point C and then find where our image point is, uh, using our compass we're going to have to create a perpendicular bisector, which means we'll need a segment in some way. And so the easiest way to make a segment in this case is going to be to have the diameter of the circle with radius from X to C. And so essentially what we're doing first is kind of creating the 180 rotation in a way and then using that to uh, then construct our 90 degree rotation. Okay, so start with my uh, little more than a semicircle through point X. And then I don't, I don't even need to draw the whole diameter and I really just need to know where is that point, where's that intersection point, where would the 180 rotation be, which gives me then a segment that point C is exactly in the center of, since it's the center of our circle. Okay, and now to create a perpendicular line here, we're going to do the perpendicular bisector construction. So we're going to kind of choose a radius that is at least bigger, uh, bigger than at least halfway across uh, that segment length. So just make sure you're, you're past the midpoint there. And then using the same radius, we're going to draw two very light arcs just enough to see where those two cross. Okay, and lining those up. And actually, technically, we only really need one because we have C, which we know should be on that line. And before I draw this line in, let's start to think about uh, the direction we're going to rotate. You know, for the 180 degree rotation, we didn't really need to care about which direction we were rotating. Uh, 180 is a half of a circle, and so it doesn't matter how you get there, you can get to the same spot. But with 90, if we rotate counterclockwise versus clockwise, we get to two different locations. And so to remember that in geometry, if we are not told specifically the direction to go, or if the degree is a positive degree, we assume that means that it's a counterclockwise rotation. So we're going to be rotating point X counterclockwise uh, 90 degrees to over here. So really all I need to draw is the line from point C out that direction through this intersection. So in fact, I didn't need to create this intersection here. Uh, if you want to save yourself a little bit of construction lines, uh, especially for larger rotations, you might want to just create one of those intersections. Okay, so once we have that intersection, let's go ahead and line it up. And with the center of rotation, and lightly draw our line. And if we were to connect, I'll just connect in this case so we can see visually what's going on. Uh, point X to point C our pre-image to our center of rotation. Again, that is where our angle of rotation appears in our diagram. So from the pre-image to the center to our image point is where our rotational angle appears in our construction here. Okay, so that's a 90 degree uh, counterclockwise, so a positive 90 degree rotation of point X around point C. So now we just repeat that exact same process for points Y and point Z. We draw a semicircle, use the diameter of that semicircle to construct the perpendicular bisector to find the 90 degree uh, angle from that point. Oops. So we center our circle as point C and radius out to point Y. Another semicircle. Draw the diameter. Although actually we didn't need to draw the whole diameter, we just needed to know this point over here to draw our perpendicular bisector now. And again, thinking about the direction we're rotating, we're rotating counterclockwise 90, so I only need to do the intersection uh, that's going to be above the line here. So a radius just more than half of the segment length for a perpendicular bisector. And it's going to be somewhere over there. And then remember where Y's circle is, is the inner circle here. Oops. And then just where they intersect is all I need. And 
So from Y to point C, and then out this way, is our 90 rotation for point Y. So we follow Y circle and find where our Y prime is. Let's see. All right, and finally, one more point, point Z. So again, we start with a circle. A circle centered at point C. Ouch, with a radius out to Z. Be careful, those metal points, they are sharp. Right. Semicircle. Draw in our our other point across the diameter there, so we can do our segment bisector. So I'm just gonna do that there. So that's my segment that I'm gonna bisect, perpendicular bisect. Right. So now perpendicular bisector, so I make sure my compass is set to a little more than halfway across that segment. So just past the midpoint. And then same radius on the other side, and where those two intersect. Connect to point C. And there's our 90, and up to the circle that Z is traveling on is the Z prime. And there we go, and then we just reconnect our points together. We have a 90 degree rotation uh, counterclockwise using just a compass and straight edge.